So let's do a math example. If this property had an appraised value, or I'm sorry, <laughs> my bad. If this property had an assessed value of $125,000, and I'm telling you that value, it had this thing called an equalization factor of 0 0.8 and the tax rate on this is 125 mils my question to you which is a very common question in the real estate world where your client says okay how much are my monthly taxes on this property so I can see if I can afford it. Now, I'm sorry, I should have said how much are my monthly real estate taxes because that's what we're figuring. So what I would like for you to do is hit pause and come back and let's look at this answer and tell me what you get. So I'm assuming you're back. So the question I ask is, your client says, how much are my monthly taxes? And you have to determine that. So let's move this up. And how many of you got $12,500? If you got that, raise your hand. That is a wrong answer, all right? That is the wrong answer, because if you notice, I tricked you, and I did this on purpose to prove a point. I ask your monthly taxes. This is a common ploy your exam is going to do to you, because the answer is, that number that you got, 12500 is the correct number for your annual taxes. The question on the exam answer is going to be about 10041 That is your monthly taxes. It's like 1041 what did I get, 60 something cents? and 66 cents. I tricked you because this calculates your ad valorem tax, which is an annual basis. I ask you for your monthly taxes. So you must take that answer and divide it by 12. And if you didn't get that, let's do this. That is simply $125,000 times 0 0.8 times, <clears throat> this is where most of you messed up, 125 mils is actually 0.125. So let's pull out our handy dandy calculator and go 125,000 times 0.8. So that is 100,000. That's the assessed value, the equalization factor, and then the tax rate is 125 mils, which is 0.125, you get $12,500, which is the question I ask you, and that is wrong because that's the annual taxes, and on this test question, I ask you monthly, so you would divide that by the 12 to get this answer on the exam. Watch for that trick. The exam loves doing this. They love asking you things like in feet and giving you answer in yards or square feet and giving you answer in acres or annual and giving you answers in monthly, all right? So make sure you watch the trick and actually answer the question that was given to you is this example right here.
Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Well, that guy's a butthole. Yes, I am. But I'm trying to prove something to you by helping you understand that there are going to be trick questions. Just like they could have said something to the effect of this property had an appraised value and a loan amount, blah, 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 blah. Once again, confusion factor to actually be tricky. Now, how they arrive at that taxing rate is very similar here because of what they do is they just do a mathematical process. They adopt the budget. How much do we need? Well, we need, you know, $13 million to run this. Then they figure out within that budget, they divide it by the number of properties in there, and that gives them some number and then they levy it against that real estate parcel. They send you a bill and then you pay that property tax. OK, that's how they arrive at that tax rate. Now, the other thing you need to understand is that tax rate are those bills can actually be added upon. And we talked about this, that anybody can add to this. If they go through the proper channels. So what I'm telling you is that while one county maybe is paying, let's make up another number, 10 mils for their taxes, there could be another county that has a new library and they went through the voting referendum and they said, we are going to add half a mil for a new library. And we want to add two mills for this new road tax. You literally can just add those and go, okay, well, the person in this jurisdiction maybe is paying 10 mills for taxes, but this jurisdiction is actually paying 12 and a half mills, right? 10 plus two plus a half is 12 and a half. And you can play this game all day. You can just keep adding them together. And then when you get that total number of mills, you plug it in here, all right? So you can just add these numbers together. And there is a test question where it says, you know, if there's this on the school district and this in a water district, just add them up. It's literally that simple. This might be the state's mandate of 10 mills, but this county called Clark has 12 and a half, where another county, maybe the other county has 11 mills because they have added one to it for something else as an example. Trying to draw with the mouse. That's way harder. <laughs> All right. So you can literally just add on to those together to get specific numbers. <clears throat> now, that tax lien gets enforced. When that bill comes to you, you must pay it by the certain due date. And if you fail to pay it, you could get put into what's called the tax sale. We have touched on this one other time when we were dealing with the foreclosures but let's talk about it again. You are given a date for which the tax sale is going to happen. You owe a certain amount. You have the right to go in and pay what is fair or the amount of money. Remember, and we called that the equitable right of redemption. And then after that tax sale, there may be a time frame, and it could be 365 days. Some states are two years. Some states are six months. Um, there is a statutory or a law, statutory right of redemption, that allows that person to redeem their property and pay their back taxes plus some sort of penalty. These are the same laws that we talked about in the foreclosure 
period where there's an equitable right and a statutory right, we have this in the tax sale. And once that gets paid, it would be then have that time frame to redeem that of 365 days or two years. And that homeowner would come back and go, dude, I missed the tax sale. I'm sorry. I apologize. What do I owe? Well, you owe back taxes of X plus you owe a penalty to the investor who bought that tax lien. So this is a very common situation where an investor would go in, but they have to wait that time frame to see if that period or see if that owner reduces it during that time frame and they would get a return on that investment. That is a very common investment strategy where you see people buy tax lien certificates throughout the United States. I would suggest that that interests you, you better look into each state specifically because there are different time frames. Uh, <clears throat> there are different amounts that you get repaid. Indiana, for example, is 365 days. Florida is a two year time frame. So during that time frame, as the investor, you don't own the property. You merely have a tax lien. And a lien, which we have already told you, is a future interest or charge against the property. It's not actual ownership. It's an interest. Okay? Now, this time frame shows up. And that owner doesn't redeem the property. Now you can get ownership to the property. All right. So I would specifically make sure you go look at which state you're interested in and which, uh, what are the specific requirements for each state. And they differ in all the states. All right. There is a second type of tax. That is called a special assessment tax. Sometimes you will hear it called a LID, which stands for the Local Improvement District. These are special assessments that are kind of like one-time scenarios. Like we're going to put a new sidewalk in a housing addition, or we're going to make all these houses attached to city water, so we're going to put a water main in. They are a special assessment. Now, that special assessment is a one-time tax. But it could be paid or spread out over a number of years to make it easily payable so that you don't have a one-year tax of 14 grand. They may say, look, your special assessment is $14,000 but it's going to be spread out over the next 14 years at an extra $1,000 a year to make it easily more paid by you. So it's a one-time tax, but it could be paid multiple over multiple years. And typically they all have the right to get repaid if you wanted to without a penalty. Hey, I'm just going to go ahead and pay the $14,000 now. All right. 